Welcome to the Education, Career, and Beyond podcast. We've combined life experience with young adult drive and ambition. Are you just starting to college plan? Did you finish your education and wonder, now what? Join us in this lively discussion about the topics you need to know to create the next stage of your life's dreams, careers, finances, education, and more. Brought to you by Voice for Heroes 501c3. Welcome, everybody, and especially welcome back, Ed. If you follow this show, you know he hasn't been able to be with us for the last few episodes, but Capri and I, I think we handle it pretty well, but we are very happy to have him back. This is the Education, Career, and Beyond podcast, and today's topic is going to be so much fun because we are going to be discussing book publishing, which I'm a huge fan of. We're going to be talking about audiobooks, which is so massive, and AI, and we have an incredible guest with us that's an expert in this field that has a lot of insight to share about this topic for careers and also ways we can implement this into things we're doing today. Becky Parker Geist, thank you and welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Glad to be here. Welcome back, Ed. Thank you. I heard I wasn't needed, so I wasn't sure if I was going to be here. The rating <laughs> reviews from you two ladies hosting things. I, you know what? I had to get back, otherwise I thought I was going to get booted permanently. So I'm glad <laughs> yeah, you were like this close. Right? Our viewership went up. Our views went up. It was our reviews went up. I know. It's, it's okay. Believe it. A little more training will get you there, Ed. Capri, thank you for being with us as always at the university when you're trying to work your school schedule and your classes and you're still dedicated to us. We appreciate it so much. Of course. Glad to be here as always. Well, um, Becky yeah. has graced us with her time on vacation. So that's why you can see if you're watching this, you see she's in the car with us. She took time on vacation. Becky, why don't, I know you have a huge background in theater. You're an expert when it comes to publishing and audiobooks. Let's talk about your background. Just briefly share with us how that led up to your expertise. Sure. Well, I uh, I always had a, a great passion for theater while I was in school, high school, and really from a, when I was a little kid. And uh, so I decided to, with the encourage of, encouragement of my parents, who always told me to follow my dreams, I pursued uh, I pursued a, a degree in theater. I went on to uh, get my master's in acting, and my first one of my first jobs out of grad school was doing talking books for the blind. This was in the early 80s when the whole audiobook landscape was very, very different. But wow, I just fell in love with recording audiobooks. And um, I feel so incredibly grateful that I have been able to, you know, really step into audiobook production as my career. Um, so, yeah, it's there's been a lot of different milestones on that journey. Um, yeah, but. It's a great place to be. Well, we're going to pick awesome. your brain on that today. I know Capri probably already came in with some questions. Well, I think I'm going to give Ed a chance to start today because he hasn't been a hasn't hadn't had a chance in a minute to interview our guests. Who me? Yes, <laughs> that's very gracious of you, Capri. Of Becky, course. I'm fascinated. Like Amy said about the path that got you where you're at today. Um, you know, we work with a lot of young people, and I, I before we get into the audiobook stuff, which I found fascinating. I was wondering if you might comment, you know, because you said that you were empowered by your parents to do that stuff. I, I work with a lot of people who, young people who are creative. We'll talk about the writing side, but I'm curious from your expertise and you've been down the road, how would you encourage a young person who's interested in performing arts to go into that, even if it's like a hobby? Like, how did you develop that once you got started? Can you just speak on that for a couple of minutes? Yeah. You know, and I had my own part of my journey where I thought, oh my gosh, I have to do something else to earn money so that I can do what I love. Yeah. Um, so it was really, there was a, a major turning point for me in, in actually in, in 2013, but um, leading up to that, let me, let me give you just a little bit of that in between time from the time I graduated uh, with you know, from grad school. And I was, I was doing theater. I, have always done theater because it is like breathing, you know, you, you just, you don't want to stop. <laughs> and, yeah. But, yeah. And, but, you know, a lot of it was just a sort of hobby level, but uh, I was really committed as well to doing professional level work and working with professionals. And so it's really about 
you know, it, when you're committed to something and you just, you know, you just know that that's what you're supposed to be doing. Then you just keep walking forward one step at a time and you find your way. And sometimes that might need me, need a side job, but for a while, but staying focused has, has been huge. It was in 2013 was when I was do had, I was coming to this point where I had been trying to do another thing that, you know, it was good as something I believed in, but it wasn't my passion. It wasn't my mm -hmm. gift. And I was in this networking training class and we were talking about the different network, like different organizations, different networks that we were each part of. And so uh, the trainer was asking about the networks that I'm part of. And then I got to this point where I said, oh, and I'm also, you know, a member of BAPA, which is Bay Area Independent Publishers Association, um, you know, for this, my other job, my, the other work that I do. And he said, whoa, 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 what do you talk, what other work? And so I started telling him about my voiceover work. And he said, Becky, you have got to stop what you're doing and do what, do what you were, this voiceover, because when you talk about that, you light up. Yeah. So I've known you for months now and I've never seen you light up the way you do when you talk about that. So that's what you need to do. Stop doing the other stuff. Focus on that. And I trusted mm -hmm. him and I took that step and I have never looked back. It's yeah, been so fantastic. I like yeah. that. The theme there was if you're passionate about it, even if it's not right there at the forefront, keep pursuing it. By yeah. the way, interestingly enough, Becky, my wife says I should be doing voiceover. I don't know if that means I'm ugly and I, sh I shouldn't be on the screen or I should be doing stuff. How, how does how does one get into that business? There Either are, that or hand model. One of those two I'm good with. Yeah. Well, there are a lot of different types of voiceover. Mm -hmm. uh, we're focused mostly on the audiobook voiceover which is a long form you know you have to yeah. be skilled at uh doing you know recording over a long period of time and uh you know obviously or maybe not obviously but it's important to also take breaks but to be able to do that you know takes a lot of stamina and some a different version of the skills that are needed mm -hmm. uh if you're if you're going into other kinds of voiceover work, maybe video games or commercials, mm -hmm. you know, you just, it's a whole different thing because you, you're you going for a different tone and different time frame. Um, so I, when I was starting out, when, when he said that and I said, okay, I'm going to just do voiceover, it took me a little while to figure out which area I wanted to be in. I had fallen in love with audiobooks, you know, many years before that. Uh, and then I had three daughters and was busy being a mom. And um, it was it was over those first couple years that I I came to the conclusion, no, I really want to do audiobooks. And that's when I started looking for well, where are the authors hanging out in my neighborhood? you know, and, and just starting to connect there. And then I started to get my first work and I started to learn more about that aspect of the industry from a producing and mm -hmm. side of it. Um, That's really good information because I think there's, uh, that just proves as another outlet for somebody who's maybe got energy and animated, maybe they're not getting the acting stuff, but they can pursue a parallel path. Thank you for answering those questions. I have a few more, but I, I wanna let the other gals get in here and ask some questions. So I'm gonna hand it back to Capri, time permitting, I got a couple other questions, but uh, that thank you for answering those two for me. Sure, yeah. Awesome. You started to touch a little bit on like the production of um, audiobooks. Can you talk about a little bit more about that? Because I love listening to them. So I want to know everything that goes into making them. Yeah, um, there's, you know, it's interesting is uh, we have many authors that come to us, you know, for audiobook mm -hmm. production. And sometimes they'll want to narrate their own audiobooks. And they really have no idea just ex how much goes into the overall process. Mm -hmm. So probably the piece that most people think of is somebody sitting in front of a microphone, you know, in a sound booth and reading. 
but there's so much more to it. So first of all, it, I talked a little bit about that sort of long form, being able to be consistent with your overall tone, uh, maintaining energy and excitement in the reading so that you're not just sort of, you're not just reading words, you know, because you're going to mm -hmm. bore somebody real quickly if that's all you're doing. A lot of it, and uh, the best voiceover talent are actors, are trained actors, because mm -hmm. they understand that. You're really stepping into, if you're doing fiction, you're you're acting those that dialogue, and you're going back and forth often, you know, between multiple characters, and you need to keep all those voices consistent and distinct. So, you know, that takes a, a set of skills. Um, and then there's all the post-production. So when you're narrating, you're, there are going to be lots of times when you stumble. That's just part of it. It's okay. Um, but learning how to do the technical side of things, both for the, the recording at all, but then also how to uh, do what we call punch and roll, which is you back up that little bit and then you come back in where, where you messed up, you know. And, the, the, and mastering is another whole uh, like audio engineer part of it. And there are lots and lots of people who are just focused on the, that sound production, uh, the engineering aspect of it. So they're listening to the audiobooks. They're making sure any little sounds that shouldn't be there are out. If something needs to be re-recorded, they're making notes for the, the actor, narrator. Uh, and then you've got the whole client review process and they're making requests for changes. And um, and then there's the getting it out into the world, you know? So once you have all those audio files, knowing how, like what kinds of files and what the requirements are, technical specifications, and then how to get it out into the world in the biggest and best way so that then they can, the author or publisher can start marketing it. That's great. I didn't know there were so many different parts to that. That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. So Becky, I'm a recording artist as well. And I've done voiceover work corporate. Now I've never done an entire book. I've, I've done larger scripts and different work like that. And I have thought about gosh, could I do an audio book? Would I, would I do even my own book? Would I do it audio? And I, and I can feel what you're saying about that patience and the ability to keep that energy, to make sure that you're staying the same in your tones and your influxes. How long do you give yourself? Let's say it's a 250 page book per se, or how do you even say, okay, I'm going to give myself X amount of weeks, X amount of days. Are there deadlines that are just unrealistic? How do you really map that out knowing you're going to deliver that quality product from start to finish? Right. Well, uh, so there are many different factors. One is if you're, if it's a professional narrator who knows how, you know, how much they can record in any one session in any one day, that's, that is one factor. Um, if it's somebody who is maybe a new audiobook narrator, an author who is narrating, they need to leave themselves a lot more time and have much shorter sessions. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's how efficient is the actor in the studio? Again, with somebody who is very new in the industry, you, you're going to assume that it's going to take them a lot more time to get a finished hour or finished minute. So uh, that is a really common uh, term in our industry is a finished hour. And basically all it means is, you know, it might have taken you 10 hours start to finish to get that one yes. finished hour done and you get paid on the one finished hour, right? Right. Whereas, <laughs> right. You're developing your skills. You're trying to become efficient in the studio. Maybe it takes you an hour and a half to get that one hour done. Now, the same, you know, the, those people might be earning exactly the same per finished hour so you can very quickly see how learning, you know, developing your skills makes a huge difference in your overall, uh, you know, what you could pay. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Makes sense. How long would you typically say that it, like a finish or it takes to make a finished hour if you're just like a standard professional? Right. So uh, I'm pretty efficient in the studio and I can usually do about an hour and a half per That's finished hour. Crazy. But I think uh, pretty typical is three, three hours. Okay. 
yeah, for someone who's get, who's been doing it for a while. Mm -hmm. How competitive is this space now? Because with today's technology, so many more people are jumping in to do voiceovers, wanting to get into that. I noticed there are a lot of platforms that you can try to get into voiceover work like that, but it's saturated. How how have you been able to divide those professionals and, and those platforms to say, this is a career somebody could have if they wanted to put in that time, work and talent? Or yeah. is it so competitive now that it's more difficult than it was before? Well, um, it is very competitive and Still, um, there is abs always room for great storytellers. So when you when you have a passion and you know that this is what you want to do, I absolutely encourage you to go for it. One of uh, there are some easy ways to get started to just get some experience. You won't get paid much for it, but it's great training, and will get your voice out there and. Uh, the platform that most people know about in terms of producing audiobooks is ACX. It's a division of Amazon. I only recommend it for those people who are just getting started and want to do some royalty share um, projects because it's, it's good for that. It's good for training. Beyond that, uh, I, it's there are way too many voices on there most of them are not great. And uh, early on, when we were getting started, we would comb through those voices. Just, you, you, you can tell pretty quickly, you know, 10 seconds, you can usually know if someone's a decent narrator or not. Yes. And just trying to find the ones that we wanted to invo invite to apply for our talent bank. But there are now many audiobook producers, and you can audition for publishers, for producers like Pro Audio Voices. So there's a lot of opportunity. There's a, and uh, I think I think we had both a, a growth in both the number of people trying to get into voiceover and also the number of projects for audiobooks. Both grew during the pandemic, mm -hmm. and. Uh, I think it's still growing, you know, uh, certainly the audiobook industry is growing. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, just keep working those skills. Read out loud. If you are, a, if you are, a, a, have younger siblings that are willing to listen to, have you read to them, go for it. If you have children, read to them. If you have a spouse, Read to, you know, read to anybody or read to yourself if you need to. But reading out loud and just getting used to that and having fun with it is a great sort of training program that doesn't cost you anything. Becky, I could make you laugh when I was doing corporate voiceover and they would send me a script and I would email back and say, whoever wrote this did not even take the time to read it out loud because this is not possible as a voiceover. Yeah. <laughs> they didn't write it with that in mind. And I always, even working with my private clients in, in speaking coaching, I encourage them to read everything out loud, see how this feels, to hear your voice, how it announces. If somebody's writing their bio or their introduction, read it out loud. If somebody was to read this for you, what does it sound like? And I love that you brought up the reading out loud because I believe that's such a powerful way for us to learn our own voices and also see how things really play out in real life when, when we hear it audibly. Yes, absolutely, yeah. You want to talk about the publishing space a little bit right now, as far as what it looks like today, a lot of authors out there, a lot of self-publishing. What are you noticing in the publishing world today? Yeah, the indie publishing world has definitely grown. And uh, I've been president of Bay Area Independent Publishers Association, uh, BAPA, for about 10 years now. And over those 10 years, uh, we, we, we'll have experts come in and, and talk to us about what's happening, what's trending, and how that that crossover line between like the big five publishers and indie publishing uh, has been really interesting to watch to where uh, the last that I heard, they were about even maybe indie publishing was was starting to exceed um, traditional publishing. Wow. wow. The interesting thing and what is, uh, um, what really makes a huge difference is uh, to be able to um, to have a high quality indie publishing. So uh, 
as uh, as in so many things. I highly recommend with uh, if you're going to publish your own book, get into some organization like BEPA or, you know, or meet with other authors who are doing that and have experience with it and learn, get, sort of be mentored in that process because there's a lot of, a lot of detail and a lot of things that um, it's, it gets very confusing. You know, there are many different platforms and, and best ways to best practices, you know, and uh, BAPA is, has been a, a tremendous source for me, resource for me, as I, um, I'm also an author. So I, when I first published, it was before I knew anything at all. And I just kind of did it. And after I learned all the ways, you know, so much through BAPA, I was like, oh, yeah, I, I didn't do any of, any of those things. <laughs> I should go back and redo it. And I, I haven't gotten back to it yet because it wasn't uh you know sort of like a good stepping stone a first step but there's there's a lot to learn and um just getting some mentorship in that area is so valuable i think mentorship in any area that you are interested in and pursuing is incredibly valuable learn from the people who yes. have done it before mm -hmm. well That's said fantastic, fantastic. All right, so Becky, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah, you've heard all three of us talk. Who do you think's got the best uh, voice for uh, voiceover in well, uh, audio books? Oh, I didn't no. say it was fair. I said I'm going to put her on the spot. <laughs> You're going to have to send in your audition tape so I can uh, <laughs> <laughs> see which one of us gets it to you fastest. I'll tell you who. <laughs> well, yeah, Amy's going to win. And I just have to sit here and push doing. a button and you'll have it in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but it does bring up another uh, thing. So I talked a lot about the value of important, of really good storytelling. And I think of that as like the main thing. But if you don't have a, a good audio quality, like I would never record an audio book in a car. <laughs> you know, if you don't have a good audio quality, either because you're, you know, using a bad mic or um, or your sound, you know, you have people picking up, there are dogs barking, leaf blowers, whatever, yes. consistently in your neighborhood. That's going to be a problem, you know? And so you have to really, you have to find your space and fix your space and make sure you've got good equipment so that you can deliver high quality audio or you won't get, you just won't get any work. And you might, mm -hmm. you might be a fantastic storyteller and still not get any work because of that. My focus mm. right is sitting right here. <laughs> Your what, Amy? What's it my called? Fo my focus right converter that goes into my Shure microphone and my pop filter. It's all right here. You just can't see it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't have any of that. So Becky, yeah. quick little list of folk things that people should get, either they're on podcasts like this or doing voiceover. You have a short list for somebody, two or three things uh, they should absolutely have. Well, you're definitely going to need a quality microphone that is not a USB mic, but is a, has an XLR and it has mm. an audio interface, which is a little box that the audio is going to go through from your computer or through your mic, from your mic to the <gasps> interface to your computer. Um, yeah. and Are you going to start singing for us? Are you taking over now to prove to Becky that you're better than no, Capri? I was just modeling what she was referring to. I was giving yeah, that I, I see what's happening here. Capri, you see what's going on? I come I back one time. On. And I, she's definitely in control. She takes no. over. No, no. It runs the show. Let's be real. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not so, true. Uh, Becky, I know we're running up on time. I just had a couple questions that I didn't quite understand. You, you alluded to it in some of your answers. One of them is... For an aspiring writer, again, again, back to young people who have a story to tell, what impact is the audio book, can an audio, have an audio recording of the book have to the overall uh, growth of an author's uh, writing? Yeah. These days, um, I'm actually happy to say that uh, having an audio book is really critical for most books. Now, not every book. 
we're not going to read a dictionary onto the, you know, the audio. But, you know, most books these days are going to really benefit from having an audio book because there are many, many and a growing number of people who only do audio books. Yeah. You know, we're just, we're driving, we're working, we're doing stuff and we're, we want to keep taking it all in. And so we, audiobooks are a great way to do that. In addition to the fact that it, that audiobooks add a whole other layer of performance yeah. to the, the book that is really awesome as long as it's well done. You know, I would say don't ever do an audiobook poorly. It better not to do it at all. But, uh, you know, a, a well done audiobook is really going to serve you as an author. Um, and there are many ways to get that done. Uh, so it, it's, it's smart to have an audiobook. Yeah. One last question. I'll give it to Capri and she can ask a few. At what point does a person take an uh, English audiobook and consider putting in the Spanish? At what Ooh. point, when you, when you believe that you have a Spanish audience? or could have a Spanish audience that you you think is really going to uh, want that that uh, content, yeah. um, I would say that's the point. And translation has become, uh, you know, translation is one thing where, you know, it needs to be done well. And there are a lot of like translation AI kinds of things that are not going to get you a well done finished audio book, but there are translators where like that can be one step in your process so that first piece is you know getting the script done in spanish because it still needs to be narrated getting a getting a, a spanish audiobook narration done is often less expensive than doing an english version oh really because i was doing an audio thing for education admissions and financial aid yeah. And uh, someone in the school district said, we need, we have a lot of Spanish speaking parents. You should translate it into Spanish. And I was blown away about what it costs to just do one 60 minute deal in Spanish. So I'll have to revisit that with you at a later date. Cause it was a <laughs> yeah. chunk of dough, a big yep. chunk of dough. Yep. Yeah. We can talk about that. All yeah. right, Capri, let, take it away. Answer your questions. Get her out of here. Four things on vacation. <laughs> I just have one more question that kind of came up when we were talking. Is there a lot of crossover between people who podcast and um, people who record audiobooks? Um, I don't think there is a lot of crossover. There yeah. is some crossover. Mm -hmm. For sure. Um, and some authors who, especially nonfiction authors who, um, you know, uh, run a podcast if they're going to do an audiobook, they will typically want to narrate their own audiobook. Yeah. Not always, but sometimes. Uh, but it, they're they're quite different in terms of the a lot of different things. Uh, yeah, so many different things. They're almost like they're re they related. They I think they probably seem like they're more related than they mm -hmm. actually are because there's so many things that are really different about them. Everything from the production through to the distribution. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That was a good question. I had a similar question. I was curious about, you know, do podcasters take uh, a handful of episodes, try to create a book out of that, and then take that to the next level and try to produce their show into a book? So I was there. You go, Ed. Are we doing that? We to could. Some more episodes and put them right into a book. <laughs> I'm lazy, so I don't want to write something. So I, what I did before is I recorded a whole bunch of stuff, and Becky, I, I used AI to tran not translate it, but to transcribe. transcribe it, and then I just put it in order. And I was like, here, here's a book. I didn't know I wasn't self publishing, and I pulled the plug on that. But that's how I did it. I was like. Instead of me just typing it, I'm just going to talk about it and had a handful of questions I wanted to answer. And they, you know, we started down the path. I had a bunch of it um, ready to go. But even that was pretty pricey. It was a big chunk of dough to get that done. Um, maybe, you know, we can talk another time about, you know, somebody who doesn't have that type of budget and wants to do it, what the path might be. Because I think there are folks out there that have stories to tell and uh how they go about doing that without big publishers and 
big budgets mm -hmm. would be a cool thing. So maybe we can have you back on to talk about that. Yeah, I'd be happy to. And it it doesn't have to take a lot of money to be able to do that kind of process. So oh, neat. some different options available. Yeah. So um, I don't know, Capri, you wanna you want me to wrap this up, see if I still got the gift or you wanna take it away? I wouldn't necessarily call it a gift, but you can give it a shot. Oh, let me see if I can do it. <laughs> well, was she just, yes, I, I would love to just like share, you know, for your audience, just share just something really quick about um, my journey that, that might be really helpful to them. And that is, I started out as, when I started my business, my official, you know, yes, I'm stepping into this, uh, Pro Audio Voices, I was a solopreneur. I was working on my own, you know, doing all the things, wearing all the hats. And it, and I was working a lot of hours and I was really kind of wearing myself out. And it wasn't until I got a mentor who mm -hmm. started, you know, I started working with him and my life started to shift. And I now have, a, we have three employees, including me. We have uh, several on our core team. So we have uh, contractors, vendors who are all over the world. And we have clients all over the world and narrators all over the world, over 500 narrators in our talent bank. So we have grown so much. Um, and we've recently been able to launch Amplify Audiobooks, which is a, a game-changing platform for authors. And all of this has been possible because of uh, mentorship and working together with team who can each do their expertise to the best that they can. That's amazing. Before we get out of here, Becky, where do they find you if they're interested in working with your team? How do we get they get a hold of you? Proaudiovoices.com is our website. I'm and putting it in the chat right now for everybody, and it'll be in the show notes wherever you are enjoying this podcast. Perfect. And it's easy to contact us from the website. Yeah. And, you, and you're in Northern California. Is that where you, you're out of? I missed that part at the beginning. Where are you yeah, out of? I, used to be, I was there for many, many years. I'm now in the Portland, Oregon area. Awesome. All right. That's the show. Becky, that was amazing. Thank you for Thank sharing. You. I know uh, there's a part of our audience like Capri and I that were curious about that. Amy kind of knows a little bit more than us and some young people always trying to get their creativity out. You've given them an opportunity to show how it can be done. Like I said, we'll have you back on to talk about the process. Um, it was a pleasure having you with us today. And you know what? That's the podcast, Education, Careers, and Beyond. On behalf of our guests, Becky and Amy and Capri, my name is Ed. And as usual, if you got some interest out of this, give us a thumbs up or you like what was talked about. If you know somebody who wants to get in that side of the business, share it with them. And we do a, a podcast almost every week. At least I do one almost every week. So when I'm not when I'm not feeling well, I usually miss like eight. So uh, I'm glad to be back. But listen, subscribe because we're always trying to find ways to inspire people in different career paths. And if that's something you're interested in, go back and listen to a couple of our episodes. We do really good work. So on behalf of the team, we thank you for being with us today and we'll see you next time.